Hi everyone, I'm Chill and welcome back to another Battle Royale Guide video. Today I'll be sharing some of the loadouts that I use for each and every champion in Battle Royale and also maybe talk a little bit about some substitutions that you can make to the builds if it doesn't fit your current matchup. And so please sit back, relax and enjoy the show. So in an attempt to not make this video too long, I probably wouldn't give explanations that are too in-depth but hopefully it should be just enough that I am able to explain to you guys on how you might want to play each of these loadouts that I'll be sharing today. I'll be doing the champions in alphabetical order and I'll also put timestamps to each of the champions in the description below so that you guys can quickly and easily find the champion that you're looking for. Thank you to one of my viewers for suggesting to me to make this video since there are probably a number of you who are searching for something like this. So yeah, with all that being said, let's begin. The first champion on our list is Ashka and so this is my build that I typically use for Ashka. I feel that heat is super useful since having to stop just to cast your mouse 2 is really dangerous. Not only that, being able to move that little bit while casting that M2 really helps with hitting your targets who are running away as well. Fire Ward and Blaze gives you a bit more firepower and sustain when you find that you need to be aggressive with your spacebar. Sometimes you just need to jump in to finish off a weak opponent and so those battle rights are quite useful for that. Even with Fire Ward, you should still make sure that it is safe enough before you jump in otherwise you'll be left without a reliable escape. Knockout and Lava Punch helps me to deal with melee enemies that manage to get close to me. In maps with not a lot of walls, you can swap out Knockout for the one which increases the knockback range since you're more likely to get some use out of that as compared to the stun. If you are after a bit more firepower, perhaps you are in a 3v3 game and you have good teammates to cover for you, then Wildfire could be pretty good and you can use a build like this. The battle right which gives you increased radius on your Q could be helpful in that situation as well, so you might want to swap out either Fire Ward blaze or knockout for that, depending on which one you require the least. On to Baco, this is the build I typically use. Warlord's Axe, Shield Bash and Wall Slam are all really good so I typically have all of them in my Baco builds. Warlord's Axe lets you do 3 mouse ones followed by a mouse 2 to secure the AWP and it also deals good damage to the enemies so that's good as well. Shield Bash gives you a bit more mobility and survivability and the stun from Vol Slam is very useful for some extra damage onto the enemy you charged. So yeah, Rampage and Mobile Defense are what I usually swap out for other stuff if I need to, but when I'm not bothered in changing my battle rights, these two battle rights are generally quite good. Rampage lets me up my DPS whenever I have a good chance to deal lots of damage to my enemies, like if they have used up their cooldowns, then I pop it and just keep attacking. Mobile Defense is useful for when you need to reposition or when you need to rush to intercept an attack before it hits your teammate or maybe even just to chase down an enemy who is one or two hits away from dying. So yeah, it's quite versatile. Sometimes if you need more healing, you can swap out Mobile Defense or Rampage for the battle right which gives healing to your Moss 2 ability. If you want to help out your teammate a bit more, Bravery, the battle right which gives a bit of damage reduction to your teammate can be pretty good as well. The battle right which increases your charge range on your E ability is quite useful in bigger maps as well since you're more likely to stun an enemy when you have it. Moving on to Blossom, this is the build I typically use for 2v2s. Hop and Skip is a battle right that I always take with Blossom since it's probably the only survival battle right that you need in most games. Nature Cycle and Spring Growth together makes it so that your charge attack is almost always ready. Couple that with Weakening Pitch and you'll output a lot of damage, snares and weakens to your enemy team, so that's super strong. Puff is the battle right that I would swap out depending on what I need, but I like it as a second escape since it creates space for you and it also gives a nice burst of damage as well when you need it sometimes. In 3 vs 3s, this is the build that I'll use as Blossom. The Healthful Bark and Bountiful Tree battle rights are very good in 3s since your trees are more likely to last and you can heal your whole team if they're standing under it. Other than that, the other battle rights are picked for the same reason as before. Next up, for Croak, I like to take this build when I do play with him. Severe Toxin and Spit 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 give some nice sustain and decent poke damage. Twin Strikes makes you that much more deadly after you jump in, and Venom Strike is always nice for more burst damage after hitting someone with your stun. The root from Noxious Reaction is always useful for the extra control. If you have to swap out battle rights for others, I would probably take out Spit 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 or Venom Strike. The battle right which gives you a heal when you jump on someone is pretty useful if you need more healing and so I take that battle right quite often as well. On to our new champion Destiny, this is the typical build I take. Power attachment and system shock are really good since it makes your mouse 2 really really strong. Her mouse 2 is probably her best ability and so I take both these battle rights almost all the time. 
Dispatch is another one that's really quite needed for Destiny since she doesn't have a lot of iframes or invincibility frame abilities. This battle right gives her that much needed survivability. I like Globetrotter for the increased movement speed on her spacebar since it really helps you with running away with it or quickly hitting an enemy and getting out. Lasting Plasma is quite helpful against ranged enemies but if you feel you need a bit more damage or survivability then taking either of the Q Batterites instead of Lasting Plasma could be quite good as well. I have found that her Batterite which improves the ultimate to be quite effective as well so that is an option as well if you maybe don't need the increased silence duration on the mouse tool or some other Batterite. Moving on to Ismo, these are the Batterites I typically take with him. I feel like Exhaust, Disruption and Wiz are quite key to playing Ismo because Exhaust and Disruption can really mess with your opponent's flow and Wiz is really good for making sure you get in and get out quick and for avoiding abilities. Since Ismo's attacks have limited range, Imp Rush is really good for quickly repositioning to a better spot to attack your enemies or to a safer spot nearer to your allies. And lastly, I feel that Bolted is very good because it gives Ismo some better poking capabilities for when he's waiting for his cooldowns and stuff. If I need to replace one of these Batterites for another that you really need in a certain matchup, then I will probably replace Imp Rush since I really like the other four Batterites together. On to Freya, this is the build that I quite enjoy using. The Twin Hammer's Batterite gives some extra poke damage and also an easy way to in-cap an enemy that's near to a wall. Lightning Rod and Torrent together makes Freya even stronger in melee range and so the combo is really good. You could probably replace Lightning Rod with a Batterite that lets you jump forward a bit when using E if you're trying to be super aggressive but generally, Lightning Rod is better for the extra sustain that you get. Surge and Overcharge just makes Freya more tanky so that's always welcome. If you need to replace some Batterites, I'd probably take out Surge to make space for another Batterite. On to Iva, this is the build I typically use. I really like Boom, U-Turn and Rocket Boosters so I take them in almost all my builds. Boom makes it so that you can take the AWP with 2 mouse ones and a mouse 2 and it is some nice extra burst damage on your enemies as well. U-Turn gives you an extra jump so you can evade attacks with it or you can even be aggressive with your space bars by jumping in and jumping out. Rocket Boosters supplement the aggressive playstyle as well with the movement speed boost so that's nice to have if you are planning to play aggressively. Durable Shield and Blast Shield are some good battle rights for general sustain and survivability but if you feel you don't need that survivability then you are free to swap them out for other battle rights. Some other good ones that I like to use are the battle right that gives the stun when you finish casting your R, the Mouse 2 Snare battle right, or maybe the battle right which gives you more maximum energy. Moving on to Jade, here's the build I like to use with her. Gunslinger, Desperado and Blasting Pistols are the battle rights that I use most of the time. Gunslinger makes it so that you can use your Q or EXQ more often, so it's really good for your survivability. Desperado makes your E that much more deadly since it can make you fire 6 shots quickly and Blasting Pistol gives you some nice damage just after you jump, which is very handy for finishing off enemies and the center orb. Even if you can't finish off something, it's good just for its damage as well. Concussion Bomb is a must when you're up against at least one melee champion since the extra stun duration is invaluable. Delight is quite useful for just a bit more sustain, but if sustain isn't that big of a problem in the matchup, the battle right which gives your R knockback a stun could be pretty good for more control or maybe even take one of the battle rights that improve your mouse too. For Jumong, this is the battle right build I like to take if I feel safe enough to do so. Perfect Shot and Power Shot are really nice together and I really like that burst and stun that I get when I use my mouse too with Jumong. Aerostorm and Trapper are really nice for zoning and Deathmark and Aerostorm give some nice damage as well. If I feel unsafe against the enemy team, I'll typically replace Deathmark or Trapper with Viper and Panther. Viper gives a little movement speed buff after using Spacebar and Panther reduces the cooldown of R and increases its duration as well. Those two battle rights are really useful for helping Jumong survive against multiple melee champions and if it's really needed you can even swap out Aerostorm for agility as well and you have something like this. So like I said, if your enemy team has at least two melees then I'll probably resort to this build. On to Lucy, this is the build that I typically use. I feel that Stimulant and Swift Roll are super good battle rights for most games since the buff that you get from Stimulant is always useful for both to you and your teammates. And Swift Roll is fairly important for such an immobile champion like Lucy. When you're up against another support, Weakening Toxin is super useful and it's almost a must pick since it drastically reduces healing on the enemy team, making it significantly easier to take them down. Chaos and Alacrity are less mandatory, but I like having Chaos to make panicking enemies easier and the movement speed from Alacrity helps me with getting away. 
If there's any other batterites that you need to swap into the build, I'd start with taking away Weakening Toxin if there are no healers in the enemy team, and then Chaos and Alacrity, in that order. On to Older, this is the build that I typically use. Unfortunately for Older, even though he is a support champion, his healing is a bit lackluster currently and so he's typically played more as a DPS and support hybrid rather than a full support. And this means getting batterites like Sandstruck, Sandtomb and Renew almost all of the time because Sandstruck and Sandtomb makes Older's E ability really deadly and Renew helps to make his healing slightly better. If the enemy team doesn't have ranged champions, Chrono Shift can be swapped out for something else that could be useful for dealing with melee enemies. Something like Drain, which gives shields when you reflect it attacks with your Q, or Time Walker, which reduces the cooldown on your spacebar ability, for example, would be better for dealing with melee enemies rather than Chrono Shift. If the enemy team has a support champion, then I typically replace Rewind with Dehydration to reduce the healing that the enemy support can put up. On to Pearl, this is the build that I typically use against teams with at least one melee champion. And this is the build that I use otherwise. I like these builds because it is a very solid and robust build. Nothing fancy but just some good buffs to Pearl's charge attacks. Soaking wet and splash damage makes your charge attacks super potent, so be sure to get used to hitting them consistently. Gush is a good way to get your staff recharged, and with the build focusing so much on charge attacks, this is a good batterite to have to have more charge attacks. Spring Water deals so much healing that I feel it is a waste not to take it, but if you feel that healing might not be an issue, then feel free to change it up for something else. I like the damage buff from Tasty Fish and that's why I typically take it, but when you're up against melee enemies, the build I shown earlier where I replaced Tasty Fish with Riptide is okay as well. I suppose if you feel you don't need Spring Water, then taking both Riptide and Tasty Fish against melees is fine as well. So yeah, I change around the two batterites on the right to whatever I need depending on the matchup, and leave the first three the same most of the time. I'm aware that there is a build for Pearl where the focus is jumping into bubbles to break them and recharge your spacebar that way. I'm sure that the Batterite system rework has made that build at least a bit stronger, but I haven't had a chance to really play with that yet so that's why I didn't include it. If you got a nice build for that, go ahead and share it in the comments for others as well if you like. On to Pestilus, this is the build that I've been having a lot of fun with. I think Pestilus is one of the champions that has decent diversity when it comes to build, so this is probably just one of many. Overlord is really fun to have even though it is not absolutely necessary, but even having said that, the movement speed you get from it is definitely quite significant, especially when it comes to surviving melee attackers as well as chasing down enemies. The fun aspect of it is a major bonus for me as well. Colony makes it easier to get that movement speed stacks, so if you're replacing Overlord with something else that you might need in a matchup, you can just go ahead and replace Colony as well since it is not too hard to spread the moth debuff with your own M1s. But in 3v3s, having Colony is quite nice since the moth damage adds up quite quickly. I feel that Swarm Queen and Sacrifice is a nice combo to have on your Queen ability since Swarm Queen makes your Queen stay alive long enough and Sacrifice is very good at dealing with enemy melee champions. You can definitely swap Sacrifice out for the Hive Mind battle right which lets you move your Queen about for some fancy plays if that's what you like to do but you need to be prepared to put in a bit more micromanagement if you do. Insectivore is a solid battle right for both healing or damaging and I really like it, especially since you almost always have moth on people to try to take advantage of Overlord. I wouldn't really recommend changing this out, but if you really need to then go ahead because I think Pestilus is strong mostly because of his base kit and his battle rights are mostly there to just add a little twist to his gameplay. On to Paloma, this build is the build I typically use for her if I know I'll be quite safe. I find that Affection, Into the Realm, and Ventral Spirit are better rights that are almost always must-haves for Paloma. Affection helps a lot for Paloma since she has trouble healing herself, so that self-healing is the reason this better right should always be picked. Into the Realm is super useful since your mouse 2 ability is arguably one of the strongest defensive abilities in-game, so having its cooldown reduced and its healing increased is super valuable. Vengeful Spirit makes it so that your panic is almost always ready to be used, and this is very handy against all types of enemies, especially melee enemies. Spiritual Wind and Dire Wolf are less mandatory in builds, but the reason why I like Dire Wolf is because it helps to set up for my teammates' abilities, and it's also helpful to stop enemies before they can get close to you. The movement speed boost you get from Spiritual Wind is quite versatile, since you can use it both defensively or offensively, so I really like having it. If I feel like the enemy team might try to rush me or one of my teammates down, then I'll use a build like this instead. This build is pretty much the same as the one I showed before, except I replaced Spiritual Wind with Spectre. 
The invisibility you get when you mouse to with the Spectre Battle Ride makes it so that enemies won't know exactly where you'll end up. Enemies very often follow you to chase you down if they can see you, and so Spectre stops all of that quite handily. Moving on to Raygon, this is the build that I've been using fairly frequently recently. I think Duelist and Invigorate is great for keeping Raygon alive, especially after to the nerfs on his base sustain in recent patches. Aerial Strike, Headlong Rush, and Royal Descent are all great for chasing down ranged enemies who will be trying to kite you a lot. But if you don't need them though, you can probably replace them with Binding Light for more snares, Overflowing Power for more heals, Dragon Mastery for a lot of burst damage, especially in maps with lots of walls, Repost for some nice damage and stuns against champions without counter abilities, or maybe even Hawk Dive for that sweet weakened debuff on your enemies. Those battle rights are all great choices as well, and so just pick and match what you need against the enemy matchup basically. On to Rook, this is the build that I currently use if I want to play a little bit more passively and not rush in as much. Squash is always good in Rook builds I feel, since the stun from your mouse too is really good at disrupting enemies and setting up other abilities. Frenzy and Madness together is also a battle right combo that's really good since they synergize very well and it also allows Rook to be really aggressive when he has the opportunity to do so. Weapon Break and Crumble in this build gives me a bit more utility for my M2 and E abilities and it's great for a bit of defensive play once in a while as well. If I feel like I need to play really aggressively to win against my opponent's team composition, then I replace Weapon Break and Crumble with Endurance and Crag. These battle rights help much more when trying to chase after enemies and be really aggressive with Rook. Next up, this is the build I typically use with Rukan. Rokan to me is best played as a bursty melee champion, and so all of these battle rights help him to pull people in, deal burst damage, get out, reset cooldowns, and repeat. Grim Edge and Wicked Strike together makes your charge attack really potent, so hooking someone in with E followed by a charge attack is going to be very devastating with this build, since we have Tenacious Demon and Death Embrace, hooking enemies in and keeping them there for your combo is quite a bit easier as well. Rokan doesn't really need to use energy as much sometimes, and so he has access to his ultimate ability fairly frequently, and this makes his hunger battle right quite attractive, since the pool effect on it is super strong. The downside to this build is that it doesn't have a lot of tools for fighting head-on against melee enemies, and so other battle rights with a bit more focus on sustain like Taint, which gives more healing when you hit cursed targets, or Leech Blade, which gives more burst healing to your charge attacks, and maybe perhaps Demonic Hunt, which gives your spacebar ability 2 charges but increased cooldown, could be useful against other melee enemies. Moving on to Shifu, this is the build that I quite enjoy using. Admittedly, I don't play a lot with Shifu, but when I did play with him a bit, this build was quite a joy to use. The Spear as the way is really good since it ensures you have enough energy to use your incaps and EX abilities, so I feel it should be in most Shifu builds. Whirling Blade and Dirty Tricks make it much harder to escape from Shifu as well, and so I think they're great battle rights to have. I chose to focus a bit more on Shifu's Q ability with this build, and so Mantra and Poise to Strike were my choices so that I could have a bit more damage and healing from hitting my counters. If you're not as comfortable with getting enemies to hit your counters, then perhaps you could replace these two battle rights with some of the mouse 2 battle rights like Ceremonial Spear for more healing, Trust for more damage, or Spear Lunge for greater range. On to Sirius, this is the build I typically use for most games. I take Seros Cycle, Lethal Slash, and Celestial Cycle in almost all my games with Sirius because I like the burst damage that these battle rights give me. I pretty much play Sirius sort of like a bursty melee champion with some healing capabilities. Sunbath is really really good in 2v2s for its burst healing potential, and I sometimes replace it with Radiance in 3v3 for a bit more multi-target healing. Lunatic is really great in keeping enemies petrified, so it is good in both 2v2 and 3v3. If I feel I need a bit more survivability though, then I take Daybreak instead for a recast on my Q as sort of another iframe. Next up, onto Tyre. While I haven't got to have a lot of games with Tyre since the battle right changes, this build seems to work fairly well. Crosscut makes it so that you can still have the mouse 1 and mouse 2 combo to take down the central orb quickly. Wind Fury and Wind Stream increases your haste uptime, and that is always welcome when playing with Tyre I feel, since you want to maintain at a distance and attack wherever you can. Cyclone and Vortex should help with controlling enemies and helping you hit your other abilities, so these are always useful. Some other battle rights like Surprise Attack which lets you move for casting mouse too, Tailwind which gives haste to your allies, Gale which slows enemy projectiles with your Q, all have some interesting effects that you might want to make use of as well. But of course it will need to depend on your opponent's team composition and what your team may need. On to Thorn, this is the build that I like to use generally. 
Neurotoxin and parasitic stems are really good since it makes it so that your thorns debuff that you apply with your mouse tools or any other abilities which inflicts that debuff will weaken the enemy and they will also receive more damage over time. Deep Burrow makes it way safer to use your spacebar aggressively and Impaling Roots offset a bit of thorns weakness at dealing burst damage. Critical Backlash is very useful especially in this build since it also inflicts thorns to your enemies but with the recent nerf to the damage output of Barbed Husk, this battleroid may not be as attractive anymore. Something like Sinister Sap which reduces the cooldown of your E and makes it deal more damage might be more useful. I think if you want more in-depth information on Thorn, I'll suggest clicking on the link at the top right now and going to my Thorn guide specifically. I've got a whole section dedicated to his battle rights and loadouts there and I don't feel like I need to repeat all of that here, so you can just click on the timestamp there to go straight to the battle right section if that's what you're after only. And finally, Varesh. This is the build I like to use with Varesh. My favourite battle rights in this build would have to be Inhibitor and Synergy. These battle rights really make Varesh so much more fun to play since it's not as sluggish with these battle rights. Applying and maintaining debuffs and then proccing them with E actually feels good and smooth now, so these battle rights are always in my Varish builds. I like Kinetic Judgment because of its offensive potential. By taking this battle right, just using R to jump in is quite a powerful move because if the enemies don't move out of the area of effect in time, they'll be silenced and damaged and so that's super handy. Because of Kinetic Judgment and Inhibitor, hitting silences on the enemy isn't too hard and so I took the silence battle right to improve the silence duration and I quite like it. Zeal can be pretty good especially when you're up against melee enemies since it is a quick way to proc your blue debuff to snare them and heal yourself for a bit. But if you're up against ranged enemies then maybe it is not as necessary and you can change it up for something else. And so yeah, that was pretty long but that was all of the builds that I typically use for each and every champion in battle right that is out currently. I hope this will be useful for all of you who just wants to get a build and run with it first when trying out a new champion. If you guys enjoyed this video, don't hesitate to give it a like, leave a comment, share this video with your friends and stay subscribed for more battle right or gaming related videos. If you guys haven't already, be sure to check out my beginner tips video, my thorn guy and all that sort of stuff. I have lots of battle right content on this channel. So yeah, go check them out if you want. I hope you guys have a great day, keep gaming, stay chill, and I'll see you guys in the next one, okay? Bye bye.